Hello everyone, this is Timothy Mark, and we are the Tickle Trucker Horror Show. Alexandria is currently out of town, so we're going to give her a call. And so, uh, we got a very interesting show for y'all today, and the show is Are Demons Real? And so, uh, we got a very demon knowledgeable, or knowledge, a lot of knowledge on demons that we're about to drop on you today. So, uh, are they real? And how do they apply in different cultures around the world? And so we're going to cover all that for you today. But before we get started, let's give Alexandria a call. I... Y'all, yeah, well, hold on. There's a ring. So let's... Hello. Hello. So we already recording on the Tickle Trunk of Horror show. I did an introduction. Don't let everybody know what the title of the show is, but before we get into all that, we're going to want to talk about what's going on with the Roseanne Barr situation. Yeah, I, like I, I'm really kind of distressed at uh, ABC and America. I've been sort of following and uh, I'm not afraid to say supporting Roseanne Barr in this uh, saga. That's really, I really think that she's just being uh, lynched for no reason and uh, I think ABC has overreached her. They've really gone above and beyond what they should be doing and I really just think bottom line it's it's a witch hunt against her and I think there's really an ulterior motive but I don't know what your feelings are but I mean I've been following and uh, supporting her on uh, Twitter with this particular witch hunt against her. She's apologized numerous occasions. I don't know what they want. Well, uh, for those of you who are listening that do not live in America, because we have a uh, we have a a lot of our listeners are from other countries, Italy, Turkey, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, the black community in North America, in the United States of America, feel a sense of entitlement and uh, a sense of. Uh, yeah, although they've never themselves personally lived through slavery, they like to put all that on white people currently today. And I like to say I, I grew up in the South. I've never been a slave owner, never experienced any of that. And uh, the people that are my age are younger in the black community. They've never experienced any of that. Matter of fact, in the South in Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia is probably roughly about 80 percent black. Uh, and the community that I grew up in was uh, about 80% black and I grew up in Augusta Georgia and it's about 80% black now I say that because I've experienced in my lifetime what would be called reverse racism and the black community would jump up and say well you know black people can't be racist well I am a Donald Trump supporter and uh, I agree with a lot of his policies and I agree I disagree with some things but what I would say is that black comedians for a long time have made fun of white people and other people uh and that's what they do as part of their community routine and roseanne barr says something and and then they they pull the black card and when they pull the black card all of a sudden she's lost her job because you know these people are sensitive but what they don't realize is with the black community are they really the viewers for the roseanne barr show you know, so, uh, you know, it, it was stupid for them to cancel the show. And I mean, I think, I mean, in Canada, we have our own challenges with uh, immigrants coming and stealing our jobs. That's another topic. But I have experienced reverse racism myself. And, uh, you know, I really don't think, I mean, it's a real double standard when you have uh, a black uh, uh, comedian doing a stand-up uh, show and uh, you know I know there's been telev pro television programs calling white people honkies and all that kind of stuff I mean that's been going on for years and years I I'm not sure why it's okay for black people to be I mean white people to be emulated made fun of all this time by black comedians and then uh, Roseanne says something in error and they jump all over I don't think her. she said it in error. I think she said exactly what she meant and I don't I don't disagree with what she said. She was talking about an Obama aide and uh, she used words I, and let me say this. I do not believe that Roseanne Barr is in any way shape or form a racist. I don't believe that. I believe that she said what she meant. Uh, she's a very political person. 
and she was uh, verbally attacking the uh, the aide for uh, uh, the ex-president Obama, former president Obama of the United States. And uh, they, we got a lot of political bullshit going on in this country over here for a lot of people who do not know, who, who have the pleasure of not having to live in this country. So let me tell everybody that's listening to this program right now. Yeah, 20, 30 years ago was the last piece of coming to America and getting a piece of the apple pie, the dream or whatever, the American dream. Because this country is going to crap. Uh, politically, uh, when, when you're catering to one race of people, and anytime they get offended, you're firing somebody. And there's and and, and the one comment that's going on on social media a lot is that the view is still on air with Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg was wearing a T-shirt that had a President Donald Trump on the cover of the T-shirt, and he was holding a gun to his hand, and he 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 was blowing his brains out. And so that, but that's somehow appropriate for ABC when, uh, when what Roseanne said was not appropriate and, and it's a double standard and I disagree with it, but, uh, this is not the, uh, American dream or the grass is greener on this side. When you come to this country anymore, uh, there's a lot of crap going on, uh, in this country. Well, now that you've said that, uh, in Canada, it seems that, that it's the Canadian dream because we, uh, in Canada we are getting a lot of uh, people that are fleeing America and we have our own problem with uh, allowing hundreds and thousands of immigrants when we can't even support uh, the people that have been born here and it makes me angry. I have a 24-year-old son that's struggling to get a job yet immigrants come to Canada and for a whole year they get everything completely paid for and I know there's a story that's been floating around social media an immigrant had uh, crossed the Canadian border walking and due to, due to frostbite he lost some of his fingers and in the, the news recently he's had um, these prostheses put on his fingers I think he's got three or four of them at 10,000 each and that's the taxpayers of Canada paying just for that. And that's not including his rent, his food, free medical uh, for a whole year. And that's just one immigrant. I really don't know how much longer Canada can uh, hold the burden when we can't even look after our own Aboriginal people and our own youth that are born in Canada. Very, very chilling state of affairs of what uh, our, our Prime Minister uh, Trudeau is really bankrupting uh canada well trudeau's just doing that as a shot at trump and uh trying to let everybody come over there and my, my thing is this you know uh I, I like i said before i disagree with some of the things trump says and i agree with some of the things trump trump says he is the president uh for people to keep being so immature and attacking him if hillary would have got elected this country would have went to shit and that's just the bottom line it is she's a liar she's a crook she's a criminal and uh, and and this country would have went to shit. But enough of this political bullshit. Uh, today's show is about uh, are demons real? And I have a book coming out in the next couple of days called Book of Demons. And I uh, definitely would recommend anybody that's in the paranormal field to purchase this book. And uh, uh, you want to get started? Or you want me to get started? Well, I think basically you've just touched on sort of the, the crux of everything. If you are a serious paranormal investigator, this book actually would be something that you should have, is a must-have. I know everybody has their little kits on stuff that they bring to investigations uh, for all different purposes. But certainly this would be a sort of a definitive guide to um, demons and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff because... In my view, and uh, uh, demons are real, and uh, I think once we can come to that realization and uh, realize that, I mean, we'll be better off for it. Because really, uh, I'm going to just touch on a few things, and I'll let you go no, into before, it. Before before you do that, because I don't know how far uh, back you're going to go, but I want to go back to the all the way to the Near East, and before you get into that, well, d all right, so the the world as it's divided now has not always been divided as it is uh now it's been titled in different ways and when we first uh look back to the history i, I don't know if you were going to talk about the near east were you going to talk about the near east or not 
I was going to just touch on a little bit on ancient Greek and stuff like that. So okay, but before we get into that, it. let's get let's let's go back before ancient Greek, and so uh, to Mesopotamia. So in Mesopotamia, that's where you have the Sumerian religion and the Mesopotamian religions, various religions in there that incorporated demons. Now, what I wanted to start out by saying too is that uh, what is a demonologist? Okay, so can you go to school to be a demonologist? No, there's no university that you can go to to become a demonologist. You have to do it through religious organizations and things of that nature. That being said, there are idiotic people in the United States of America who assume uh, that they know what the criteria is to be a demonologist. Matter of fact, somebody put a comment on one of my video about, you know, it takes years and years to do that. Well, no, it really don't. Uh, it depends on how it might take her years and years to do it. it depends on how fast you can get through the program and how fast you can retain knowledge Obviously, she was not an individual that could retain knowledge or pass the test and that's why she made the comment so uh, Demonologists exist in many different cultures and many different religions and they're not always gonna uh, Function the same if that makes sense. So let's go all the way back to the Near East and we're talking about Mesopotamia now the importance of that is the Sumerian religion predates Judaism by thousands of years and so it, it would be one of the earliest if not the first religious religious uh, or religion uh, religious civilizations was in Mesopotamia organized religion and so in the uh, tales of Gilgamesh uh, you would have Stories of demons, stories of Lilith, and things of that nature mentioned uh, back in the ancient Near East, which also included Iran, Crete, and ancient Egypt. Actually, as ancient Egypt was established after after the uh, Sumerian civilizations, then you have ancient Egypt coming up. So we've been going back before ancient Egypt, but later on, ancient Egypt did get involved, ancient Iran, and uh, and Crete, and so what they did what the rituals that they had in their ceremonies was that they would use purification and cleansing rituals which is maintained through almost every religious thing when it comes to holy prayer or altars or things of that nature where people need to cleanse themselves and purifications christians are, are more traditional christians today's modern traditional christians are more the weaker groups of people as in they're too damn lazy to do cleansing and purification rituals I'm not a Muslim. I do not agree with the Muslim uh, belief, belief system. But what I will credit the Muslims with doing is they do wash their face and hands and everything before they pray, which is something that Christians don't want to do. I mean, Christians just want to look for reasons to sin. And so, uh, you know, you go into that. But let's, all right. So outside, when you go back to uh, Samaria, outside of the purification and cleansing rituals that we did, that they did they also had sacred prostitution that's something that may be uh, sound weird to a lot of people but back in the ancient civilizations it was something that was very much a sacred act and uh, it was something that was done religiously and so and I'm getting into that stuff because now I want to go into the uh, magic conjuring and things of that nature that they've done um, so they would conjure after the cleansing uh, processes they would actually conjure not just good spirits but they also conjure bad spirits or what we perceive as bad spirits and I'll touch the base on that a little bit later but we we can say that this belief system in demons originated back in Samaria in ancient Mesopotamia all right so go ahead uh, I'm going to sort of just, uh, you touched on something about most Christians, but before I get into uh, some historical uh, aspects of uh, demons and demonology and all that, we have to really come to the realization that today, uh, most Christians today, really, they actually serve, they say they serve God, but they also serve the world, and reality uh, you really, if you're a true Christian, uh, I may stand corrected, you are not allowed to serve the world and God at the same time. And, uh, right, and the reason why that is, is touch base on that. But because before, 
before organized religion, what did we have? We had one third of the angels and Satan himself cast down onto the world. Well, what did God do with Satan? God said, look, your kingdom is the world. So we know that the world belongs to Satan because during the trials of Jesus, when Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan was trying to tempt Jesus to come worship him, one of the things Satan was offering him was all the kingdoms of the world. The, the king of this world is Satan. And that's why if you read for Christians out there, because I can fight you with your own book. For the Christians out there, I like to tell you that if you read your book before you open your mouth to disagree with me right now, you would see over and over and over again that it says, do not love the world. And you would also see over and over and over again that the world is evil and Satan is the king of it. Go ahead, that makes sense. That makes total sense. And I'm sort of going to go into a layman's term for a lot of you that may not be familiar, and I'll kind of put it in easy uh, Reader's Digest kind of context for people. And really what the majority of people think is really a demon is a supernatural and, you know, more often a malevolent being that is really uh, prevalent in religion, occultism, literature, fiction, mythology, and even folklore. And the original Greek word, uh, daemon, and it's spelled D-A-I-M-O-N, does not carry negative connotations to that. So that's something to really remember, that the original Greek word doesn't have any kind of negative uh, attachments to it. And it really, uh, the ancient Greeks say that this word is a spirit or a divine power. And much like the Latin genus or N-U-M-E-N. So really, um, really the supposed existence of demons, and that's what a lot of us have in our minds, kind of really remains a very important concept in many modern religions now and occultist traditions. And uh, now, I mean... Uh, Demons these days, when people think of demons, they're, you know, the fear really comes into them that uh, demons can really attach themselves and really possess themselves to living creatures. And that's the first thing that pops into a lot of our minds. I know you've touched on a lot of some older history. Well, the modern, really the modern day definition of demon, and when I say modern day, it's been for a thousand years now defined as an evil spirit or a source of a our source or agent of evil and that they cause harm, distress or ruin. And that's how we know if something is an angel or a demon. But hold on. Wait one second, because doesn't angels also cause harm, distress and ruin? So a lot of people who have done a lot of books and a lot of research and studies, when they see an area that has harm, distress, and ruin, they automatically add the, ele the element of evil to that because they see in death and destruction, and they'll say that this is a demonic area. Okay, well, let's look at the Christian Bible. Angels also caused harm, distress, and ruin. But they did not have the element of evil. And so if somebody on this planet was to see an angel come down and wipe out an entire city, then they could mistake it as a demonic force. And in their mind, they're adding the element of evil when actually it could be an element of good. Okay, let's, let's, now that you've, you've, you've put that out there for everybody, let's put it into another perspective. And this is, what is evil is often defined by what one believes. And what one religion's God become another religion's demons. So what that means is that one particular religion uh, has this individual as a God, whereas another religion considers this uh, individual a demon so it really depends on what your definition of evil and what you truly believe yes yeah, definitely based on what your religion is because in a lot of religions Jesus may be uh, looked at as a demonic entity and so uh, you know it's just what religion are you attached to 
uh, you know, for people out there, I never hide my religion. I'm a Judeo Christian. And so as that being said, I'm not a modern day Christian. I'm not a traditional Christian. I don't live and die by the King James Version of the Bible because I know that as a uh, very diluted down and uh, just a summarized version of the entire word of God. So it's very hard to say one religion is right and the other one's wrong if you're just basing it on the King James Version Bible and you're not looking at it as the whole, the whole word, word of God, then the whole word of God is preserved in the Ethiopian church. And that's, that's the books of the Bible that are from beginning to end that Constantine and his priests could not get together and molest. But on that subject matter, what is your, uh, like, what do you think about the Testament of Solomon? And for you, for people that are familiar with the Testament of Solomon, it's, um, Suppose it's written by King Solomon, in which he, he mostly describes, in particular, demons that he was uh, able to enslave to help build his temple. I absolutely believe that's true. I absolutely believe that Solomon used demonic forces and good forces and enslaved them and had them do their work. And he, why, why and how he could do this? And if you're thinking for one second, if you're sitting there and listening to this show and thinking that you can do the same thing, you're blowing smoke up your own ass. Because what's the one thing that Solomon asked God for? He asked God for wisdom. And, and Solomon was the wisest man to ever live. There was none wiser before him and none after him. Even Jesus Christ himself did not have the wisdom of Solomon. And if you and I know other Christians drop their jaw. And if they don't be careful, somebody might stick something in their mouth. But when you hear that, read the Bible before you try to disagree with me. Jesus himself said, referred to uh, the knowledge of Solomon. So Solomon had the knowledge and ability that we, can, we can't even imagine where he had control of both angels and demons. And, uh, you know, if we move forward from the time of uh, King Solomon, really there's been various attempts throughout history by theologian scholars to now start to classify demons. And uh, the study of demonology was historically used, or, or we think, to, to understand uh, kind of the demons' morality, their behavioral tendencies. And that became a huge... Um, well, let me interrupt you there. As, as, as a demonologist myself, I want to interrupt you there because the study of demonologists, again, she's she's classifying that from 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 one definition, one religion. No, I was going to go into more, but I'm just saying no, but, a but, lot but, of people but, these days may think that. Yeah, they may think that because a lot of people get into demonology because they want to obtain the power of the demons and they want to try to control the demons. And yeah, they want to understand how they work how they, and things of that nature, but they don't have the same motives that a lot of people think. They know it's not just uh, people who are in the Christian world that can become uh, demonologists. Actually, some of your stronger demonologists were never Christian because Christ wasn't even born when you had demonologists before Christ. And, and they, their term hadn't been developed yet, but people were doing it. And so, uh, you know, there you go. And I'm, I'm going to put this out there, and maybe you can comment, or maybe people can kind of think about this before I go more into uh, different kind of classifications through history. As you know, I'm a historian, so I'm just going to throw out different uh, classifications. But really, uh, it has been said or uh, been thought of that really demons <coughs> need an open door or a porthole to actually enter into a person's life. And an open door or a porthole could mean uh, negative behavior. You could be doing drugs. You could be doing alcohol, criminal activity. So uh, w what's your feeling on that statement from you know your perspective well, uh, of being a demonologist? Let's look at what the word that everybody out there knows thanks to certain Hollywood films, which is conjuring. But really, uh, you know, conjuring was way before Hollywood existed. And uh, basically, what you're talking about, an open door, is a way of an act of like invoking spirits or using incantations and charms to cast magical spells to bring these demons up around you 
so you can try to interact with them. There's dangers in that because you don't have the wisdom of Solomon. And uh, you, if you don't know, and I, like I say, I've studied demonology for a long time through different religions. And so you can't just go to Harvard and become a damn demonologist. It doesn't work that way. You have to do it through religious uh, cultures. So, yeah, uh, the doorway can be open by using magical spells and charms and things of that nature but there is dangers in that and that's classified as witchcraft let's go into one of the most misunderstood statements in the bible which after constantine and the priest decided to water down the bible one of the things they kept in there a lot of people say that the bible says that you should not play with magic spells and witchcraft in Deuteronomy 18:10, it says, "Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in a fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft." But what you don't realize is that's in your watered-down version of the Bible. And so, if you read the other books of the Bible, you will see that these things were performed and were used for good. And so you have to get the Ethiopian Bible. And, the, and the, look, when people think of Ethiopia, their minds are small. So they think of what these current commercials they see on TV of all these black people and stuff over there. But no, it's not like that. King Solomon's son actually started a church in Ethiopia. So there's a lot of history there that, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sick of arguing with traditional Christians and about it. But yeah people say you shouldn't play with it i agree you shouldn't play with it if you don't know what the hell you're doing because it can cause harm and ruin in your life and even death and uh, talking about that too in the past historically there has been various uh, individuals that have uh, done studies on demonology and uh, they also call them infernal spirits and a lot of these individuals have tried to classify uh, demons by domain. And that means, uh, meaning that uh, their attributions to a very specific sphere of activity or knowledge. So if we break that down, these people in the past that have done various studies in demonology are hoping to lump uh, demons into groups based on what these demons do and what knowledge that these demons have. And uh, there was a particular individual, Michael uh, Salas, and I don't know if I'm spelling that or saying that right, but it's spelled, because sometimes P is silent, it's P-S-E-L-L-U-S. -L -L and he actually, he prepared a specific classification of demons in the 11th century, and he attempted to uh, divide uh, demons into three groups. And... Um, one was the fiery group, uh, the other was the heliophobic group, and then the third was the terrestrial group. And there's various names in regards to those three particular categories. And this is this individual in the 11th century uh, trying to classify demons into or divide them into, you know, a fiery demon, a heliophobic demon, and a terrestrial demon. So, I mean, that's early in the 11th century and then in 14 between 1409 and 1410 uh the lantern of light and they, they say it's sort of it may be sort of an anonymous english uh kind of tale that's attributed to white cliff and uh it, again in that well let's go hold on for a minute the, but before you go too far i want you to keep your thought there because i'm going to come back to it now, now let's let's look at that. If you're going to go into demonology in any way, shape, or form, a lantern of light would be something that you a source material for you to read. Uh, Wycliffe, who was Wycliffe? Wycliffe was the guy who uh, was he put out a Bible that predates the King James Version Bible. Why is that significant? King James hated it, but you know anybody hates something that, should, that that the world and the powers that be want to try to keep you from hiding matter of fact if you try to get a white cliff bible today a lot of it's been changed and updated to more fit with the king james version which came after the fact but go ahead finish your thought well this particular uh they figure this anonymous uh english uh work the lantern of light is based on really they're saying that 
there is a demon classification system that is based on the seven deadly sins. And uh, it's saying that it, it established that each one of the mentioned demons tempted people by the means of these seven deadly sins. And uh, the, it goes on to say, or it is known, that this particular list was later used in the works of John Taylor, uh, uh, the water poet. And it lists that, um, to go into uh, the first deadly sin or whatever, Lucifer was associated with pride. And uh, the loud, oh, I can't even pronounce that name, but <laughs> maybe you can do it. Uh, Bob. <laughs> No, I ahead. have a problem no, with no, that name. No, go ahead. What, what, what? But uh, the spelling is B-E-E-L-Z-E-B-U-B. -E 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 and uh, he's a Beelzebub. Yes. I, I can't even say that name for the life of me. But he is associated with envy. Satan is associated with wrath. And uh, Abaddon is associated with sloth. And a very interesting, number five, Memo, is associated with greed and all of you fans out there i've watched this movie the movie that's called the craft and i know it's based on these witches in school a lot of people have seen the movie the holloway movie the craft in this particular movie these witches are calling on memo uh they're summoning memo and they have all these powers and not really, I'm not going to spoil the movie, but uh, Memon is uh, so associated with greed. And, uh, and the way I, I pronounce it is Mammon, but go ahead. No, in the movie it's Memon. Okay, they, well, they uh, diff Memon. different cultures do it different ways, but you're right, right you got Lucifer, Beelzebub, Sathanius, Ab Abdenim, Mammon, and Belphegor. Memon? And, uh... Belfagor, uh, uh, yeah, Belphegor is actually associated with gluttony, and Asmodus, Asmosis, is associated with lust. So that was the seven uh, deadly sins and how that attempt was used to classify uh, demons. And there was another individual by the name of Stina in 1467 that prepared another classification of demons based on different criteria. Uh, they, he, uh, some of the criteria that was listed in Spina was demons of fate. Uh, there he, he included goblins, uh, incubi and succubi were also uh, included, and for all you witches or wiccans in there, he also includes familiars, and everybody that is a witch is said to have a familiar, and also there's liar demons, mischievous demons, and demons that specifically attack saints. So this class of classification in 1467 was not based on the seven deadly sins. Uh, it was based on some other different criteria that it was thought the demons would fall under. And as you mentioned, King James, again, previously, he, King James wrote a dissertation titled uh, Demolities, and that was first sold in 1591. And actually, that was several years prior to again, the first publication of the King James authorized version of the Bible. So King James apparently uh, was a, he thought he was a authority on demons at that particular time. Yeah, I don't even want to get into King James. King James... I, uh, I, that's why I figured, you know what, he's, he's brutalized so many different things and, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I don't think I would really read or his publication that was sold in 1591 I really don't think I would hold much weight to it and uh, I think what all these different classifications and what these people are trying to say is that they're basing a lot of this criteria on demons and Satan's techniques that are, are, are used to really enslave mankind. Yeah, well, you know, let's get into some of the demons and stuff that are described in some of these uh, books and resource materials. Let's let's look at one of the most popular because a lot of you, the fake people that are claimed to be Satanists and demon demon worshippers and things of that nature, uh, they they only know certain names of demons. So I want to feed them one right now and kind of blow their mind a little bit with it. Okay, I'm going to ask a question right now to everybody out there. Is we're going to talk about Krampus. 
So with Krampus, who who do you figure came first, Saint Nicholas or Krampus? Krampus. And why is that? I, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, are fascinated with uh, Krampus and legend. I mean, I'm just, you know. No, no why, I mean, why, yeah. why, why would you say that Krampus came before St. Nicholas? All right, let me, let me answer that question. I'm going to answer that question, okay? St. Nicholas was a man. St. Nicholas was born. St. Nicholas died. There is no fucking Santa Claus no more. So for all the kids that believe that, it's bullshit. There is none. Krampus was a demon. So Krampus has always uh -huh. been, and Krampus was always here, and he's still here after the death of St. Nicholas. But if that's if you to believe that Krampus was a demon, was Krampus actually a demon? Uh, in horror movies, they portray him as a demon. In some literature, he's portrayed as a demon. But guess what? Krampus and St. Nicholas in the old stories traveled together, and they went into homes together. And so then you can say a lot of people will say on the other side, they'll say, well, then uh, Krampus may, may not have been a demon. But hey, guess what? Satan and God has conversations in heaven. So you have the yin and the yang. You have Krampus and you have St. Nicholas. But if, if you believe that Krampus was a demon because he did devour children, uh, the bad kids, and he would punish the bad kids and he looked demonic because... You know, we think angels as being cute little babies with fucking wings. But, you know, was Krampus an angel or a demon? What's your thought? I, I really think he was an angel because uh, Santa Claus is the uh, Christian attempt to, I mean, everybody knows that, I mean, I was even told this as a child that if you were bad, Santa Claus would leave coal in your stocking. So I really think that uh, Santa Claus was a Christian way of... Uh, putting terror into little children but i certainly think that krampus was indeed an angel and a lot a lot of people listening will be like what how can you call somebody that would devour children an angel well what did angels do in the bible read your bible christians who want to debate me right now read it angels were assassins for god now i'm not going to confirm or deny if krampus was an angel or a demon because i have no idea i do not know I know he's portrayed as a demon. If you study demonology, guess what? He's one of the demons that are listed. That's what she's going to be taught is a demon. But he could very well be an angel because we know people who wrote books that are resource materials and study guides for different uh, demonology courses. No matter what religious culture you under, Krampus, the name Krampus will always come up as a demon. And talking about that... What is your thought process on, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to go through, there was just tons of different classifications, different people through history that have done their own take on it. But what is your, your, your take on this particular statement that Satan assigns uh, to certain demons who, to rule on earth and uh, they actually call these um, different areas principalities and it says that each demon specializes in a particular area. Well, exactly. You can't, you can't believe in hell or believe in Satan or become a demonology. Actually, actually, if you're going to become a demonologist, uh, you would have to believe that there is princes in hell. And so, a matter of fact, some of the demons uh, have names. And, and the book that I have coming out called Book of Demons, I actually show a, an old illustration of one of the princes with wearing a crown in uh, Alyssa's name and things of that nature but you you cannot graduate or call yourself a demonologist without having the understanding that there is a hierarchy in hell and I think what we have to really come to terms with is why do people choose the darkness over the light and I think when you're you're talking about demons Satan and all these individuals the bottom line is, why, I mean, we're given free will from God, but why do people choose darkness but over light? But hold on, light? Before, we, before we go back too far away from Krampus, I just want to give people a brief description and then we'll move on. Because uh, he's one of the demons that I wanted to describe to people out there. He's described as hairy, usually brown or black. It has clothing 
cloven hooves and horns of a goat and so I really wanted to get that description out there because that's why a lot of people associate Krampus as uh, as evil as a demon because of his uh, cloven hooves and the horns of a goat a matter of fact to be honest with you Alexandria when we did room 118 because I just I just did a revision on the book and that I had so I just did a revision but it, the 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 visual of the goat man what we call the goat man in room 118 if you look at the old illustration of krampus it's very similar to krampus actually and or again the other name Bayamet. Bayamet. no that's not the other name they're, they're two they're they're two they're, they're the, the other name for a goat man right because now now right. it's not another name for for uh for krampus Krampus is a separate demon from Bayamet. But with Bayamet, now when we look at the goat man, there's many different people we would call uh, the goat man uh, possibilities. But I'm saying in room 118, yeah, Bayamet and Krampus have similar look. True. But Krampus and Bayamet are two separate entities. Right. So, yeah. What's that? That kind of makes sense, and I mean, when, when you're talking about demons, evil spirits, I mean, we, you know, there's fallen angels, there's bound demons, there's helper demons, there's just so many different uh, classifications, and a book that I own, and it's the book of uh, Abram Mellon, and uh, that was uh, supposedly written in the 14th, 15th century, and uh, he has uh, classifications, again, where there's uh, how he classifies the criteria or the hierarchy is at the very top there's four princes and it's lucifer leviathan satan and uh, uh belli if that's pronounced properly b-e-l-i-a-l bello that's how he classifies the very top of the hierarchy is the four princes and then underneath the four princes is eight sub princes uh, and then uh, he goes into all the detail and he does a lot in regards to uh, conjuring and a lot of it if you are into King Solomon again with the King Solomon seals and uh, different kinds of stuff uh, you will see how he's even conjuring or uh, invoking even Gabriel and some of the angels as well <laughs> well let me let me uh, all right Okay, I am a demonologist for the people out there listening, and I've took many courses. And I want to say it like this. There is no motherfucker on this planet that knows the structure of hell. When we're saying that this one asshole thinks that there's four princes in hell, that is his fucking opinion. We do not know. One of the things that we do know is Satan would mislead anyone. The demons would mislead anyone. Why would you give up your numbers? You see what I'm saying? And 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 there's many different conflicting study guides and materials on this issue. We can say, oh, okay, well, yeah, in hell, there's four different princes. Well, did I die and fucking go to hell and meet them? No. So if I didn't, then guess what? How in the hell can I tell you this? It's only somebody's no, opinion. Right. He's just trying to, at that particular time, in the 14th, century, 14th and 15th century, that's his version of the classification. If you read more into his book, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of demons. And uh, he just is an, an attempt on his version to classify different classifications, and, uh, well, there's more. There's more. Some, there, there, ancient, there. Uh, Go ahead. Based on some ancient writing, so he's just trying to take some knowledge and trying to. I mean, you're right. Nobody really knows unless you've been there. That's a completely accurate statement. But through time, there's been several <laughs> different attempts to classify and to put different criteria into uh, what their take in their time frame in the world, uh, what they categorized as 
demons and uh, well let me let me tell I, you for somebody who's actually like i'm a demonologist again i'm gonna say it again okay and one of the things that i'm gonna let people in on that it's not really a, a, a hidden secret in demonology but it is the fact that before you can graduate and and have yourself classified as a as a demonologist again it's not from a university you have to do it through religious studies is that you have to accept the fact that it's an ongoing learning process and there is no study guide or research material out there that's the absolute you're being quiet there I, hear, and I agree with you completely totally it's a learning curve and unless you <coughs> into hell and back you have you cannot say you have the infinite knowledge because the only person that has the infinite knowledge would be Satan himself and God but, wh but where God can where can we get closer knowledge uh, about demons that would be more accurate than somebody who says oh okay I walked into the woods and this is my take on hell okay well Solomon the wisest man that ever lived that would be your first research guide that would be your first book that you really want to study from beginning to end and you have the testimony of Solomon which uh, was mutilated by uh, Constantine and mutilated by the priests and because they wanted to limit our powers and control so Solomon was trying to give the world secrets and with these secrets they are out there they are written and then you, if you check out the testament of Solomon Solomon it's one of them and uh, in the testament of Solomon Solomon describes lots of demons now these are not opinions these are facts we to take this as factual because Solomon was the wisest man to ever live before and 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 after there's been none wiser and so knowing that and knowing that he had the control of the demons he could actually describe them so your true source for description purposes of demons would be the testament of Solomon and that would be the closest to the 100% absolute again there's no absolute but uh, because you know his words been mutilated but the be closest to the absolute would be the writings of Solomon then to get the testament of Solomon unfortunately you cannot get it from the King James Version you have to get it from the Ethiopian Bible or if you take any demonology classes they will have it separate even though it's not in the book and again there uh, the King Solomon had several uh, sequels and uh, you yourself wear a sequel when, based on the, the writings and the studies of King Solomon. There are uh, uh, documents that uh, have these particular sequels on them. And, uh, you know, I'll leave that up to the audience to go and look up what the sequel is. But, uh, again, that is based on King Solomon and uh, his way of uh, invoking, as it were, uh, several uh, or various demonic forces or demonic entities and I think we sort of have to touch on this for the listeners out there you know when you're dealing with demons evil spirits I mean you really have to take steps to protect yourself and we always stress when we do investigations and things that we do protection is key and I think some of the things that you really have to do in regards to dealing with demons or evil spirits is again they always tell you you have to put on the white armor of God and you have to be totally familiar with the word and the white God. the white the white armor of God would just be a, 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 a another way of saying you need to purify your heart in your mind right. you need to have total faith it's not literally like you're wearing white armor it, the white armor is to purify your heart and have pure faith in your mind and uh, we'll be, let's describe a little bit because I know we're getting ready we're getting close to running out of time here but what I want to do is describe a little bit on more on demons and what they look like because I figure this is y'all's one chance to hear from an actual demonologist on a podcast and what I want to talk about is the Akkadian belief system in the Akkadian belief system, demons were one, hairy. And so uh, that that's a very interesting thing to attribute to demons was the fact that Akkadians seen them as the, the, the demons that the Akkadian people dealt with were hairy. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, there you go. That's something that a lot of you 
wouldn't <coughs> work and wouldn't know or re- wouldn't realize. And I think people have to get away from the fictitious works out there like Dante's Inferno and uh, John Milton's Paradise Lost and focus, like you stressed again, over and over, the testament of Solomon on uh, an individual that really had the knowledge about demons and, again, not focus on Dante's Inferno because, I mean, who's to say, you know, I mean, they're not credible sources. And, again, knowledge is power, and I think that's very, very important. Knowledge is power. And uh, we've been taught in traditional Christianity to avoid knowledge that it's actually evil. And, uh, you you know, I I don't, knowledge is power. If you read non-traditional Christian books, non-traditional Christian texts, which will actually be older texts and older uh, uh, faith books, uh, they will say that you should gain knowledge and seek knowledge and by seeking knowledge you're seeking God although when you look at the uh, the the stories within traditional Christianity they teach you to try to stay stupid and so uh, there you go and I think again the statement that I made uh, in the podcast and I kind of want to wrap up my train of thought is that I really think that the uh, Catholic Church nowadays is really trying to use these dummy down techniques to keep people under their control and that is their way or their technique of enslaving mankind where they have full control by just feeding you small tidbits of knowledge because again if you obtain too much knowledge you're going to have the power and the church won't be able to control you and i'll tell you in buddhism buddhism a lot of people say it's not a religion a lot of people say it is a religion but in buddhism and we're talking about ancient Buddhism. Uh, M A R A Mara is a demon that is uh, from the religious faith of, uh, and I say religious faith of Buddhism. There is people out there that practice Buddhist meditation techniques, but may have other religious faiths. But if you go back to ancient Buddhism, uh, Mara is a demon that is uh, included in their belief system. And, Amazing, and I think that that's I didn't know that. And let me just tell you about Mar. Mar uh, is somebody that is responsible in Buddha, Buddhism for unwholesome impulses, unskillfulness, and the death of spiritual life. So a lot of the ignorance that exists in the United States, or let's just say North America continent, on Buddhism. Uh, you know, with them thinking that they're not spiritual people or religious practices, I uh, very much is. And so their demon is responsible for unwholesome impulses. Like, let's say that you want to go whack off, you know, jerk off, whatever, right? Well, that demon would be responsible. That would be an unwholesome impulse, unskillfulness. Uh, so if you lack skills, they would say that the demon Mar is affecting your life. Uh, if you if you uh are, 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 are have death of the spirit mar took your spirit and so mar is also known as the tempter distracting humans from practicing the spiritual life by making mundane things alluring or the negative seem positive which the, that's what traditional christianity does is make the negative seem positive how many of you are shoving BLTs into your mouth right now and have mayonnaise dripping off your chin it's just a negative it's made to seem positive okay wow wow you got anything else to say or what I think really what again we have to pose this question to our listeners out there why do people choose darkness over light and I think that's a question that every one of us uh, can ask ourselves and uh, with some of the behavior uh, going on in the world that that seems to be more than none uh, people these days instant gratification would be there's there's two reasons people choose darkness over over light and one of them's for shock value which that's the way you have your fake people out there and you know you know they're fake when you take them to the fucking cemetery and you watch their eyes as they're about to uh, 
they're, they're about to they think they're about to die and you see they start praying to God and so really they 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 really choose the light when it comes to when the shit hits the fan they're choosing the fucking light if you're if you if you're someone who's truly chose the darkness then when the shit's hitting the fan you're not praying to God and so there's a lot of fake wannabes out there and they just need to get off that bullshit um, and, you know stay in the light stay away from the darkness another way reason that people choose the darkness because it's instant gratification when you walk into the light it's a very it's a very mellow feeling uh, least power because believe it or not positive energy makes you feel good and it uh and you have this communication with the spiritual world but negative energy has such a different emotional thing that goes through your body that your body feels like it's almost instantly gratified gratified like let's take ed gein or someone like that that's a serial killer and they're out there mutilating bodies and stuff like that they're getting instant gratification from that from taking someone's life from draining their blood they're getting like instant relief from that whereas then you have the slow relief of the positive side of things by walking in the light and you got slow and because people don't want to just have that little slight enjoyment the peace of mind and everything every day some people want extreme gratification instantly yeah but i think that's all down to society these days society people in society we have no patience we want everything now we are a now society and even with kids growing up they want things now they don't want to have to work for it they don't want to have to wait for it they want it's a now uh now generation really yeah it's it's a fraudulent generation people out there want to shock their parents or they want to shock their neighborhood and they want to tattoo a little satanic shit on them and then we but you grab a hold of one of these motherfuckers and throw them in a van and take them out to the river somewhere and then you stick a knife up against the goddamn throat guess what's happening then they're praying to god to so stop being fake i know a lot of you people out there are probably saying man you cuss you're this you're that and um yeah but guess what i am a warrior for god i am a judeo christian i'm not a turn the cheek bend over christian and there is a need for people like me and my religion well, with that being said, do you want to tell people uh, before we end today's podcast what's coming down the pipeline with Tickle Trunk of Horrors? Yeah, I don't feel like that we've uh, accomplished what I wanted to accomplish on this podcast. And the only reason why we didn't is because there's a lack of time. I really feel like we need another hour to talk more. I mean, th th this, uh, this, let's answer the question first. The question of the... Uh, the podcast was are demons real yes demons are real that but i think that we need to do a separate podcast on maybe demonology uh and maybe make it a little bit of a longer podcast because it's, it's such a deep subject that you just can't fit everything into a 60 minute time frame and so well, i mean we just touched the, the the tip of the iceberg and uh, we've through different uh, aspects of the podcast we have answered the question through well, various religions and faiths that yes everybody does say they are real and then they have their own spins uh, based on rituals practices and uh, everybody is coming to the same conclusion since the beginning of time well, even in the bible well let's have for proof real. Let's offer proof. And that's why I say I want to do another podcast because, and I want to throw some examples out there of proof before we start getting into what's the future of the podcast. Because let's look at Annalise Michelle. I mean, when you look at her, born 21st September 1952, died during the exorcism pro uh, uh, process in 1st of July 1976, two years after I was born. Uh, pretty, pretty college girl. Uh, definitely, uh, if you ask her if Demons is real, she would give you a yes. Uh, because they ultimately it destroyed her and killed her and uh, who knew what the hell she was doing to uh, get the demons on her like that I do not know but yeah um, so there you go that's yeah, one, that's one example totally. that's one example if demons are real and okay. like I said I agree with you we could do a whole separate podcast on uh, on exactly that and uh, quoting different... Uh, well, I want to uh, uh, give another example. 1949, Robbie Mannheim. Everybody's seen the movie The Exorcist with Linda Blair. 
Uh, you got the little female right there being possessed by a demon, right? But actually, it was a boy, and his name was Robbie Manaheim. And uh, he was the subject of the exorcism in 1949. And uh, they filmed the movie off of it. And uh, the film was written by William Peter Blady. And it was a damn good film called The Exorcist. And uh, But if you ask Robbie Mainheim, who is still alive today, if demons are real, real, he'll give you a hell yeah, they are. They are definitely real to him. And he went through the process. And he was, it was the story, was he was portrayed by a little girl, Linda Blair. But no. Uh, but, I mean, you know, anybody will, will tell you where there's good, there's have to be evil. There's two sides of the coin. With One cannot exist without the other, and that's just a law of nature. Where there's good, there has to be evil. Yin and yang. It's just the way it goes. The flow of the universe. Well, let's look into the 1600s. I want to give you all more of an example if demons are real. Uh, let's, uh, what y'all can do is Google a name and I'll wait for y'all to get a pen. Go ahead. I'll give you three, three down count. Three, two, one. Should have a pen by now. I Google the name Elizabeth Knapp, K-N-A-P-P, -P, of Groton, Massachusetts in the 1600s. Uh, she was documented by a prominent preacher in the Puritan Massachusetts Bay Colony as being possessed by a demon and her exorcism took one year so for all you jackasses out there all you media whores looking to get some quick uh, media social media attention by thinking an exorcism can be performed in one day fuck y'all no it cannot be there's so many examples that it cannot be like again fuck y'all and so there you go yeah, I think anybody that is into exorcism will realize that it's it can uh, exorcism can be a year year can go on for years or even a lifelong. Practice. I mean, they thought the woman was a damn. They thought Elizabeth was a fucking uh, nymphomaniac. Why did they think she was a nymphomaniac? Because what would she do when the demon started possessing her body? She would grab her titty. She would grab her crotch. She would try to strangle herself. These are things that she would do while she was possessed by the demon and uh and when she was going through the exercise and pro process then let me tell you they put it as calmly as they could when they were documented talking about she was grabbing her titties and her crotch back in the day i mean let's face it she was masturbating in front of the preacher wow okay i guess we can't say more we can't add more to that and so i'm just trying to answer the question is is demons real okay now you can go, a lot of people can argue and disagree and dispute the Amityville Horror Story. Let's look at Butch DeFeo. He maintained demons is real ever since the 70s when he killed his entire family. Only recently, he killed his entire family in the 1970s, early 70s. He was convicted in 74, the same year I was born. He only recently changed the story because, hell, he thought that would let him out of jail. That's the only reason he changed the story. Other than that, he's always maintained that yeah the at first he told the cops that the mafia did it okay because he was shot he didn't understand he was confused but uh, years and years and years he stuck with a story of demons uh possessing him and having him do this and only recently has he changed the story so he's a witness that's changed his story but you can't blame him because he's still in jail you ask Zach Bagans if, uh, if demons are real. Yeah, he just filmed a movie called The Demon House. So we're trying to give you all examples there, and you can Google it. There's many of them out there. And we will have to do another podcast on it. Absolutely. So now we can talk about our upcoming guests. Now that I got I'm glad you got that all out of your system for right now. And, uh, I, I mean, that's information for people. We will do another podcast a part two in regard to this and focus more into demonology and i'll let you announce who, uh, who's going to be our up-and-coming guest well it's a lady an actress by the name of darcy demoss uh she was in my favorite friday 13th film friday 13th part six um but she was also in other films uh, in the 80s that were like cult classics uh, can't buy me love uh and then hard bodies and 
other 80s films and uh but my favorite by far would be the one friday 13 part 6 and and let's not keep in mind she's not just an actress from the 80s she's still acting today her most recent films were like sharknado one of the sharknados and things of that nature so she's still a, a working actress so she'll be joining tickle trunk of horrors podcast on june 13th so that's coming up real close and uh, as we get closer to different dates, we have more exciting guests from different genres in the horror slash paranormal world. And like I said, uh, we appreciate all of our uh, listeners and uh, all these podcasts, like, share, and uh, it's important. We love all of our fans and we appreciate all the support. Yeah, we love all the fans, and uh, you can co put your comment in the comment sections. If you disagree, agree with what we said. But, I mean, let's just don't be like a computer warrior if you disagree. Let's actually make sure that you educated. Educate yourself before you put the comment in there if you disagree. Have some validation. Have some resource studies, uh, material uh, study, because guess what? If you're ignorant, who the hell gives a shit if you disagree? 